episode number three. Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl here and welcome back to the tech gift guide series. Today is gift ideas under a hundred bucks and in case this is your first time tuning in, we've got episodes of the last two days which was 25 and $50. I think tomorrow's episode is under 200 and then we've got the ultimate baller series which is gift ideas over 250 bucks. Of course, the best part is you can win across any of these episodes one of the items and like I've mentioned before, the rules are super simple to enter. Just be sure to sub to the channel, leave that one comment down below on the favorite item that you see and of course follow over on Insta for behind the scenes stuff and on or in and around Christmas day, I will be announcing the winners for five of these episodes. Best of luck to everyone. We're getting a bit more festive with some of the B-roll stuff. Let's bring our first item into the mix. It's a big one. So this guy is the Tautronics Sambar. It's usually over a hundred bucks, but I do have a coupon code below to make it right underneath that price point. I think soundbars are great because most TVs that come out of the box don't have the best speakers. If you did buy, say, a budget TV, you don't wanna break the bank with, say, a $1,000, $1,200 soundbar. That just doesn't make any sense. Take a look at this guy. I think it's a real bang for your buck option. So spec wise, it's around 30 inches long, so it should fit most TV stands. It does have four options to connect to your TV via optical cable, coax, auxiliary, or even Bluetooth. So you can have it mounted in a different region. It's a 2.1 channel soundbar with two primary drivers and two subwoofers. It does give you 360 degree stereo sound. Obviously not as good as a full surround setup. We can't really compare the options as once again, this guy is under a hundred bucks. And when you compare that to things that cost say 10 times as much, like I mentioned, you're getting a ton of value. It's got an LED display up front. It even has its own remote to control the volume or input on its own. It's one of the best and highest rated soundbars over on Amazon, so I'm not just tooting the horn. I actually got this someone for a gift myself. I think they'll look forward to it. If you're on a budget, you want better sound than say your stock TV, look no further. The next two items that I just brought over from my iMac Pro, which are part of my new setup, we'll start off first with a keyboard. They're both from Logitech. This guy is the MX Master Keys, and it replaces the stock iMac Pro keyboard that I had. It just has way better throw, and the ergonomics I find are also better. Even though I think this guy might be aesthetically more pleasing, if you're on a keyboard for hours at a time, I type a ton more emails these days, the MX Keys just feels better on the hand. Each of the keys has a lot more travel and they also have a small indentation for your fingers so it does feel better. I find that the angle is better compared to say the iMac Pro keyboard which is a bit too flat. I think Apple sometimes takes its design cues a bit too far. Yeah it looks good but it just doesn't feel good on the wrist especially if you're typing like I said for hours at a time or are editing. It's backlit, the function keys work for either Mac or Windows, so take your pick. A numpad, which I'm a big fan of. I know that aesthetic keyboards sometimes miss that, but if you are crunching numbers, if it's something that you need, and the color does match the space gray found over on my iMac Pro. So I think it's a great match, and we'll go over to my favorite upgrade, I think, of 2019. It's been the Logitech MX Master 3. And I'm usually a big Logitech guy. I've had both the MX Master OG as well as the 2 and 2S. So Logitech now has made version three. I think this guy has been out now for maybe one to two months. If you're on the fence of spending $100 on the mouse, trust me, once you make the purchase, I think you'll never look back. It's got scroll wheels for both your thumb and forefinger. And if you use apps, say like Final Cut or Photoshop, you can map those to do different things. So for example, I'm in Final Cut. I use my thumb wheel to scrub through my timeline. It's got two extra mappable buttons for your thumb and one for your finger. I sadly have some of mine set for builds out in Fortnite. And I think the best part, they've made the upgrade to USB-C to charge. I would say that I charge either of these guys maybe once a month. And thankfully those charging ports are at the front, unlike say the iMac Pro's mouse, which are on the bottom, which renders this guy useless when it's plugged in. One of the worst designs I think Apple has ever come out with. 
One of my next personal favorites is the wireless charging stand from Google. And I know it's a bit pricey for 70 to 80 bucks for a wireless charger. There's obviously cheaper options out there, but I think for the design, the simplicity, it just looks great in my all white setup. I'm willing to pay that kind of money for this guy. As the name implies, it wirelessly charges your device. So I have one both set up here in my studio as well as in my living room. Don't tell Google that I charge my iPhone. Most of my devices that I do end up testing live on this stand and say when I'm in my studio, when I'm editing, I have say sport highlights playing on my iPhone and it's charging while it's propped up. So I can kind of glance at it way better than if your phone is just flat on a table. And the last tech gift item under hundred bucks is the Amazon Echo Show 5. This guy is way cheaper than the counterparts from say Google, or I guess even Apple doesn't even have a smart display clock. If you've already got Alexa integration, I think this makes the perfect gift. It acts as its own smart speaker. So you can ask Alexa to say, play music, play your audiobooks, ask the time, of course the weather. It's two degrees Celsius with rain. Today's forecast has snowy rainy weather with a high of two degrees and a low of zero degrees. Yeah, that's shitty Toronto weather for you. <laughs> These are great starting points into the smart home tech game. Stay tuned to my next episodes. I'll go through other options, but this guy fits into this episode as it's one of the cheaper ones. Anyways, that was my five tech gift ideas for under a hundred bucks. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Remember, I've got two more episodes to come in the gift guide series. Make sure you enter to win one of the items. All that will be announced in and around Christmas day. Hope you guys are enjoying the holiday season and I'll catch you in hopefully tomorrow's episode. Peace.